the beauty. I mean, when you look at a brain under the microscope, there are all these absolutely beautiful structures that are there that, uh, you know, that are, you know, it's, it's like art. This is the hippocampus, for instance. It's a very rich structure here. It's, it's very characteristic and you can actually look at the cells that make up these different parts. The human brain is very large, right? And I had studied only mice, rats, and frog, actually. It's the other thing. And they have very small brains. And you can just go to Fisher catalog and order everything you need to be able to work with those small brains. But when it came to look at the human brain, I had to be um, innovative enough that everything had to be custom. And I had to figure out how I was going to do these things on those large pieces of brain that were no longer one centimeter, but you know, several inches uh, by several inches. When we first started, it was said that we couldn't really look at the human brain in the way that we wanted to look at it. Because um, when, when, you, when you study animals, if you want to do, for instance, anatomy, you really have to perfuse the animal. That means change their blood for a fixative. And in the human, you know, uh, the medical examiner, they, people die, but the, the, the blood is still in, in the brain. And that really interferes a lot with, uh, with a lot of the assays. I mean, a lot of people now do human postmortem work, but at the time, there were very few people doing it, especially at the level of anatomy that, that we do it. So the changes that we see are definite but subtle. The, uh, the other thing that we haven't gone into is how, how we get these brains and how we, ha we characterize them. Because at the beginning, people used to just get a brain from the medical examiner and try to and try to do biochemical experiments on those. But it, we, our group actually was instrumental in changing that, in saying that unless you really were able to psychiatrically characterize the people that we were studying, the research would be meaningless. And um, uh, Dr. Mann is one of the pioneers in, in what we call psychological autopsy. So we interview family members and they, they get asked questions that are standard. They're standardized questionnaires. So everybody gets asked the same questions. And then we're able to, to look at, we have a lot of information. We get family history of these individuals. We get uh, medication prescription, prescriptions uh, for, for these individuals. We get uh, um, a lot, um, uh, how many episodes of depression? Were they psychotic? Uh, did they have drug use? Did, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, uh, of questionnaires that are able to, for the psychiatrist, to make a diagnosis of the, just as if they were alive based on these questions. And to this day, we have like a monthly uh, meeting that I attend, but I'm not really a, cl a clinician, but I, I attend that meeting where the, the, uh, the, after the psych psych psychologist has done the interviews with the people, there is what we call a consensus diagnosis with several psychologists and psychiatrists you know, saying, yes, this person had depression and this person did not, or all of that. We really try to probe and, and, and find out as much as we can. Of course, it's imperfect because maybe this person had a lot of things that they were trying to hide from the family or from the friends. And uh, we'll never really be able to, to, to ascertain a hundred percent of uh, what we're getting, but it, it, you know, it gets. A, this is as good as it gets in terms of um, in terms of research and in terms of finding out exactly what it is that is wrong. I mean, and can we just can we just talk about uh, depression 
and suicide, which is the way that it used to be thought about. I mean, they used to think that anybody who committed suicide had to be depressed, right? But that's not true. They're, the, what they have in common is that everyone who commits suicide, or at least 95% of the people who commit suicide, have a diagnosable psychiatric illness. So the first findings that we had were that uh, the, the people who die by suicide seem to be, uh, seem to have a part of the brain which is right over the eye, the orbital cortex, um, to have a deficit in that region. Now that region is the part of the brain that is involved in stopping behaviors, in behavioral inhibition. So it's, it's you know, it, it, it's useless to tell somebody, snap out of it, you know, the, the, because, because they're ill. And part of the illness is being unable to suppress the desire to kill oneself. And that is the part of the brain that is involved in that. And we found several changes in that part of the brain. Um, th we found that they have um, abnormalities in the receptors that receive the signaling from the serotonergic system. And we found also that there were actually uh, changes in the number of cells that are there. So there is a loss of cells. And so when you look at the brain of a depressed individual versus a brain of a person who died by suicide, the changes in the suicide are much more localized and the changes in the person who is has suffering from major depression, they're more, more widespread. The people who die by suicide are people who are sick, okay? They really, and we can see it under the microscope. And what I want people to know is that if we can really continue doing this research and find out more things that are wrong with this group of individuals, then we can really hope that we can prevent suicide, that it should, it's a preventable disease. And it is a preventable disease. What, what, uh, what we, I would like people to know is that there shouldn't be a stigma associated with it. Illness is not anybody's fault, okay? And, uh, and because of the constellation of things that need to happen for somebody to kill themselves, it will be wonderful to be able to teach people that they should seek out help when they see that they are losing it because uh, it's the only way that we're going to be able to improve in our efforts of suicide prevention.